here again I am Stanford Museum and uh, this exhibition is one of the very 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 best I have seen and uh, it comes to be so private and personal to get close into an artist's real inner world. So here is the exhibition of sketchbooks by Richard Diebenkorn, Diebenkorn, the sketchbook revealed. Richard Diebenkorn was uh, a very famous artist. Not famous or not, it's not important. We do not uh, say artists because they are famous or not. But uh, through seeing his, uh, his uh, artwork and sketchbook, I have totally a new layer of respect to this artist. So there, there are 29 sketchbooks. And when he passed away, he studied at Stanford. Stanford learned art. And uh, when he passed away, his wife kept his sketchbooks, not knowing if she would share this with the world. And eventually, she decided in 2014, she decided to share this book, his sketchbook. This is Richard Diermancorn, and uh, was photographed by Leo Holub. This is the sketchbook. When you see a drawing so delicately, so, so intuitively, and so naive, or so originally draw, it immediately brings so much closeness into the very intimate art world of the artist. This is beyond word that I can I can tell how much I appreciate. It's uh, it's so close. It's just as if the sketchbook of myself, it's just as if the sketchbook of my friend, of my students. When you see the delicate work in this piece of work, let me see if I can, I can uh, zoom it in a little bit. See, I'm trying. how much delicate work and attention he has put into his sketching exercise. And only by this delicate, delicate and precise, accurate study of the painting object, can you do it on a large scale? Can you do it in a more presentable or more uh, larger scale? This 
is the base. This is the fundamental. And this is the starting point of everything. Later on, he, his style evolved. And it's totally different from this. But still, you can see the color nuance and his uh, delicateness of using light, using shade, and using the strength of the color shading. It does not have to be a strong impact. This one gives us such a depth, such such um, a clear, crisp sense of this painting subject. So, he has done different kind of study, only by seeing marker, and then I think that must be pen, and uh, larger pen, Throughout his life, he always kept. He always kept his sketchbook with him, so that he could he could catch the moment and uh, and catch his thoughts once it pop up. I remember once. Uh, one time, my friend told me the most scary thing. He is an artist. He made a gallery exhibition and things. And he said one of the most scary thing is that you had an idea and you forget it. And he <laughs> sometimes recorded his idea on phone or have a piece of paper to draw it or or wrote on phone or a notebook. So this one, what we are seeing now, it becomes very much more abstract. All comes from a very solid, delicate study of the real subject. just amazing to see the artist artwork in such a close range, in such a, a nonchalant, in such a relaxed, private and very intimate moment. I just feel this is so unbelievable that we got a chance to be so close to the artist and uh, he was using the book that everybody else could use. Great artwork or any artwork comes from practice. I remember the other day I was in art class, some of the student just uh, uh, kept sinking, 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 stare at a, at a ceiling and not doing any work and I was I asked why don't you do your work he said I was thinking I don't know what to do yes one thing is that it is very hard to 
to find something to paint. It's not that there is nothing in this world for us to paint. There are everything can be can be expressed in an artistic way, but not everything touches your heart. I so totally understand it. There are times that we do not paint for for a day, for two days, for three days. We just lost inspiration, just do not get could not have the inspiration, had have the motive to paint, to draw, to do art. Look at this. And it is very hard to find that inspiration. When it comes, it comes like like flood, like tornado, overwhelming, take us all away and uh, we paint it, we draw, and we we just uh, put ourselves through ourselves totally into the art. But when the inspiration is gone, it's just gone, and we could not find. We could not find the motivation, the reason to paint. Anyway. So let's come back to my original thought. So there was this one student, he kept uh, not only one, actually a lot of students, this happens all the time, could not uh, decide what to paint. And then I said, painting is not from thinking. I mean in a particular sense, that you cannot produce a work by just thinking about it, by just think, thinking, think, thinking, 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 thinking. It does not come out, your work. It does not come out. Painting comes out by painting, by working, by putting color, by drawing the line, putting the shape, by slowly, layer after layer, stroke after stroke, by doing the work. Okay, this silhouette has a special story. It was, uh, there were eight of this silhouette he was trying to do, and he was, uh, he has done it eight times and uh, changed a little bit of the people's shape, changed a little bit uh, of the of the uh, child's shape. He was trying to express a feeling of uh, a family and the relationship. And what he concentrate is uh, the silhouette shape and to put. Uh, the emphasis on the shape instead of on the specific face feature, body feature. No, they are not important. The important thing is the relationship is the owner of the painting or the person he wants it to describe and it's the distance and the nuance of how they stay together. Such an interesting thing. And this particular sketch, I love it, I love it. And um, I know everybody, you may say everybody can do this. This seems no thoughts, no idea. But what I see, I see each of these stroke is uh, so solid, so confirmed, and so much stress in each of these lines. There is a thinner and fatter line, and um, and um, this is 
This can only be done by the skilled person, by a person who kept kept drawing, writing, kept using pens. There was this beautiful quality of the lines, just beautiful quality. The quality of of the shape of uh, how it uh, composed together. You may try it. We may try to draw this line. We just could not have this uh, this strength because I saw some Chinese painting, and uh, a good artist he does a painting uh, just. Unbelievable! One stroke, the hand is shaking and uh, and uh, moving, and every stroke is full of strength and interest. Anyway, um, here are some of uh, Richard Diebenkorn's work, and uh, when he studied. At Stanford, he he really he was very much influenced by Edward Hopper. Edward Hopper was a very influential artist. He brought uh, he he was very famous for painting New York. So let's first see. Continue to see Richard Dierbenkorn. You see this, and then we move on to see the artwork of uh, Edward Hopper. You can feel that uh, there is uh, something, the commonality or the spiritual similarity, spiritual closeness. So Richard Dierbenkorn's painting. His painting was uh, kind of uh, not too bright, and there is always the color is dark. Not only because it's old painting; it's just his choice of color has this very kind of uh, uh, nostalgic, sad, lonely. And uh, and uh, distanced and cool and just uh, there is a a lot of poetry in his painting. There is a feeling in the painting that photograph could not. Express. There was something that uh, beyond photograph. Let's say this one. There is such a heavy feeling and warmth. Even you feel old. You feel history. You feel, but you feel close. You feel connected. And this one is Palo Alto Street. Maybe I should go there to show you this particular street. This must be that must be the Colo Palo Alto Cow Train, and near the Cow Train Station, and some little Spanish apartment here. Mushroom house, oil on canvas, and the same mushroom house, and painted by gouache. So this one. So we are seeing Richard Diebenkorn. He's a、uh, 
sketchbook and those very very private and very just uh, I am so so we are just so blessed to have this opportunity to see such an intimate collection of artworks. Okay, those are the Richard Devon Cole's work, and now we come to see Edward Hopper. Edward Hopper is very influential artist, and this is one of his iconic paintings. He painted a lot of New York, daily scene, noonday, little small things. I don't know whether he was the first, but he was quite pioneer to bring something that we usually ignore into a piece of painting. There is nothing dramatic in this painting. It's daily life, but he brought it on canvas and trying to tell us a story. The story of uh, a busy city and uh, isolated, lonely individuals. And, uh, there is just uh, the choice of color and uh, intentionally, I think. He intentionally didn't paint the detail of the human face because that, that might not be important. It's, uh, it's the city. The city swallowed the whole world and this it's also Edward Hopper, but this painting is in, in a pencil, pen and pencil, in very much more detail. And to tell, the center of this painting is this couple, maybe a liaison, maybe it's on the night train, maybe something. Well. And that one is about the city. An individual person is not important. And this one is about the night train, about this couple, where the person is the most important, the main character of this place. Okay, now let's move on to Richard Diebenken. Diebenken, 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 Diebenken. Take another look at this artist. So here are some of uh, his sketchbook pages. And Stanford has uh, uh, digitized. In that table, you can click on the icon and find uh, all the all his uh, sketchbook all into digital format. So right in front of us is Richard Debenkong. Modern painting, abstract, expressionist painting. Not this one. This one is uh, yeah. 
abstract not this one this one is Richard D. Lincoln. it is so different from what we have seen but remember we have seen one in his sketchbook that's something like it not exactly but uh, those line and shapes there are something much more profound about this kind of abstract painting that I do not understand and I feel frustrated and feel depressed <laughs> I went to a modern museum and uh, felt so depressed how could this piece of painting here and uh, and I just could not understand modern art needs a lot of uh, background story when you see the artist a whole spectrum of works and see his evolution of his style you may find it easier to understand got to go. You have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye, friends.